Sometimes science is calculating a rocket's escape velocity or discovering a new species of toads. Other times, it's dropping things onto other things to see what happens. That's the one we're doing right now. For millennia, humans could only make things out of what we could find in nature. Wood, granite, native metals like iron, and that got us pretty far. But that smartphone in your hand wouldn't have been possible without man-made materials. Neither would automobiles, airplanes, and even artificial hips, knees, and hearts. Combining math, physics, chemistry, and even biology, material scientists like Olivia Greve are literally creating new materials to solve today's problems. My interest and my love for material science comes from a series of inspiring women, my teachers, who really believed in my capacity to be an engineer and to be a material scientist. It taught me what are the things that I need to know in order to be successful. But before they can put a new material into the hands or bodies of the public, they need to know just how tough that material is. One of the projects that my team is working on is how to make steel stronger. And so we're gonna be testing steel today, but to failure. To failure means it's supposed to fail. Yes, for example, in space, if you have a satellite, you have to figure out the materials that it's made out of, especially the outside. How much can you impact it with a meteorite before it breaks? Wow, man, I'm psyched. Let's go test things to the point of failure. Well, now you're talking like a material scientist. For today's experiment, we'll drop a steel ball onto a series of natural and synthetic materials. In order of weakest to strongest, we have treated wood, glass, acrylic, copper, ceramic, regular steel, and Olivia's super steel. Wait, so this is a material that you made? Yes, uh, it's an amorphous steel, and it has a special name, it's called Sam 2X5630. Ooh. So the main difference is how the atoms are arranged. In regular steel, you have a certain very ordered arrangement of iron atoms and carbon atoms. And in amorphous steel, it's really like a hodgepodge of the locations of the atoms. And that actually gives it a lot more strength. It has the highest recorded elastic limit of any steel alloy. The higher the elastic limit, the more uh, you have a capacity to basically not deform, dent, bending, those kinds of behaviors. It also won't rust. Wow, so this really is super steel. It sure is. We think it could be used for armor or shields for satellites in, in case of impact in satellites. So you literally made a material that's meteorite proof? Yes, that's the idea. Okay, that's the coolest thing out of this world. Once we've geared up for safety, it's time to start dropping the ball, scientifically speaking, of course. Three, two, one, drop. In round one, all the materials hold strong except for glass and ceramic. So to increase the impact stress, we apply more kinetic energy to the materials by dropping a larger ball from a greater distance. This piece of wood has now failed. When nothing else fractures, we take things to the next level. The second story, and let it fly. Three, two, one. Okay, we lost another one. There's some spider web uh, cracks in this material now. There is a little bit of a dent. So this copper is really very good, but it did dent. Next up is the steel. There's actually a scratch on this material. So not even a dent, certainly not a fracture, just a scratch. Yes. All right, let's try out the amorphous steel that you and your team made. Dropping in three, two, one. Ah. Yeah, Naveel, nothing. Nothing went wrong with this sample. Well done, good job, Naveel. And good job to you too, Sam 2X5630. You nailed it. I gotta say, Olivia, I've never had so much fun breaking stuff and breaking stuff in the name of science. Well, thank you so much for an incredible day. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I might just take this home if that's okay. <laughs> it's too heavy, I can't even lift it. Okay, well, thank you, bye.